Hello, and welcome to Rules of the Game. My name is Ty Halpin, and I serve as the staff liaison to the Baseball Rules Committee at the NCAA. With me today is Jim Peranto, Secretary Rules Editor of the Committee. The Committee recently completed two days of meetings in Indianapolis and have several action items we'd like to discuss. First is, is the point of emphasis of pace of play, and Jim, we, we spent quite a bit of time talking about this issue. You want to run us through a few things there? We really did, Ty, and pace of play is an issue that's important to all of our constituents in NC2A and college baseball. Coaches, players, fans, especially the fans and our umpires. The most notable thing that I think the committee wants to do is assist in keeping the game moving. And emphasis uh, was placed on the umpires in assisting and keeping it moving by enforcing the batter's box rule and there is a prescribed 20 seconds between pitches with no one on base and the committee felt like that we had not enforced that as we should have. Coaches are important to the process too. They can assist in the pace of the game by getting their offensive and defensive signals into their players in a more timely fashion. Uh, limit their number of trips uh, for clarification on rules uh, and see if they could hold those trips off till in between innings. Uh, game management is another process that can aid the pace of play. Uh, setting time limits on the entrance music that players have uh, prior to each at bat, uh, keeping the uh, keeping the players in the batter's box. The umpires are going to have the most control in uh, limiting or increasing the pace of play and keeping the game flowing. So really, we're looking at trying to trying to eliminate some of that dead time that is there that. No, nobody really loves about baseball. That's right, and if each each area can contribute um, three to five minutes of save time, then we've shortened our game times down to around three minutes. I think it was 3.18. Three hours, yeah. In the World Series, yep. and there are games across the country that stretch a lot longer than that during the regular season, and it's difficult for a fan to sit there for four and a, four or four and a half hours watching a ball game. Good. Thanks, Jim. Uh, the next one we, I think we talked about was the, the code of ethics and uh, not, a, not a, a, a minor issue here for sure, the sportsmanship and those, those things that are related to that. Uh, the code of ethics has always been at the front of the rule book. Uh, the committee was made aware of some acts specifically designed to attempt to gain an advantage outside the rules. It, it's not a widespread problem, but the actions, do, you know, they appear to be orchestrated to give one team an advantage over another. So the coaches are, or the committee is asking the coaches for their assistance in the review of the code of ethics, in the adherence to the code of ethics with their players and their assistant coaches. Great. We, we also talked uh, a bit about celebrations, and, and uh, that's a, a, a part of baseball we love, and uh, uh, college baseball specifically, but there are some, some issues with, with uh, teams coming out of the dugout to celebrate. We talked through that. There are, there are a couple of issues that can cause problems for not only the umpires, but for game management and for both clubs. Uh, one of the issues is the interference obstruction that can happen if uh, a live ball is misplayed and it hits another player that's out of the dugout improperly. Uh, that can certainly cause uh, some hard feelings and once everything is sorted out, it can have other ramifications uh, during the course of a ball game. The other action is sportsmanship. If you have one team celebrating in front of uh, another team's dugout or in front of their catcher, obviously after a home run, a sportsmanship issue could be compromised. Great. 
Uh, coaches' safety, certainly Major League Baseball put in a, a rule that, that their base coaches must wear helmets. What did, what did the NCAA committee do? Here? The NCAA followed suit. Coaches will be required to wear a helmet in 2009. Okay. Also, uh, field markings. I think that was an area that the committee spent a significant time discussing and, and, uh, and came to, to some, some points of emphasis there. There were several reports during uh, the last season of fields being marked improperly, particularly the batter's box being too close to home plate and fields not having coaches' boxes on them. And we can see for a safety reason that coaches' boxes need to be on the field and the limits placed that are placed on them by the rules of the coaches being in the boxes must be enforced. Outstanding. Uh, those were really the major changes for the season. One, one reminder, this, this book that we're printing uh, will cover the 2009 and 2010 seasons as part of the NCA's uh, process of, of two-year rules books. Um, we, we appreciate your time and attention to this presentation. For more information, go to ncaa.org for other, other information on the Baseball Rules Committee. Thank you.